Hey guys, so uh, back here with uh, Dev Flyer. I'm Jamie, this is Schuster. Hi. So today we're going to be uh, continuing our build of the uh, pet social media platform. And today Schuster is going to be talking about um, building his back end and starting that out. So uh, Schuster, I'll go ahead and uh, give it to you. Cool. I am figuring out how to share a screen. And it has, ah, there we go. Cool. Yeah, that's me. There you are. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. So, uh, yeah, uh, this is like our our third episode, I guess. Um, I'm not seeing a. You're not seeing what? That's in the corner. I'm just seeing you. But uh, cool. Because you're sharing your um, screen. Oh, got it. Yeah. So this being our third episode, we kind of have just to go back over what we've done so far is we've done the front end and uh, we're doing it in Angular. And Jamie, you're doing it just to like get people up back up to speed. And I'm going to be doing the um, back end in Express. Uh, that's all I know so far. I think there will be, there could be like next, you know, some other framework that we might add as uh, time goes on. But um, I've kind of already set it, set it up. And should I be working off mainline, Jamie? Uh, probably the develop branch. No? All right. Yeah. So uh, as you can see, I'm on. Uh, the server branch right now, so I'm going to go over to the develop branch. Well, there's all your stuff in the develop. I don't like the name of the develop, by the way. But. So the, the reason I did it was because we had, uh, when I worked at the clubhouse, there's a guy named Bo Strickland, and he was like, in my opinion, he was like the god of yeah. like all things tech, super, super cool guy. And um, he always called everything develop. So I was just following him. So uh, I just pulled the develop branch, right? Yeah, I did a pull and it's showing server as empty. So um, I'm gonna go back to my server branch and we'll do a pull request or we'll update that pull request or something. That's cool. Um, so yeah, uh, I've done some like basic boilerplate here in the server folder. Um, and so just so you can see the project, we have the UI, which is going to be our front end. We have this git ignore in here and our readme. Uh, and then in, for me, I'm going to be working in the back end. And I'm a front end guy, so I don't really know much. So hopefully, like back end stuff. So hopefully, I'll, I'll learn along the way. Um, in the git ignore, I put node modules and any type of lock JSON files we get. I've seen folks also do like like wildcard lock JSON. I think I think that works too. I think they they both are fun. I like to explicitly set it sometimes. But here, I wanted to show you my package JSON just to show you the small little things that I have in here. So I've downloaded uh, something called NodeMon and express. So uh, coming from front end world, I really liked um, hot module reloading. So like whenever you make a save, you do, you know, you don't have to go and refresh the browser because that could get really tedious. So NodeMon is just like a package that refreshes um, stuff for you. And usually with uh, node when you all like to run this source app JS and I'll show you what it does. Um, here in a second, let me go down to server. Um, so um, if you run source slash app JS, this is my actual application. Uh, it should just start running and I already have it running in another tab. Ooh, how do I kill processes? Mm. It's yeah. Help. So okay. Well, you're, oh, do you know? I run, no, because you're running no. BSD, right? BSD. Is that what you're running? What are you running? What do you mean? I'm running. There's a node process 
in. Um, did you start it in terminal? Did you start it in VS Code? Terminal. So. So I need to figure out what the what's your find and kill process locking port three thousand. What's your is that it? Pseudo ls of. Pseudo ls of. Yeah, and I think I killed that terminal accidentally. And so I think it's just running. Just orphaned out there. Yeah. Uh, nobody look at what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know my own password. Okay, so it's P90. So it's. Is it. Um, I don't think it's this vamp thing. No. It's like kill, right? Are you, well, are you using CentOS? I am using Debian. I think it's like kill like dash nine or something. Kill dash nine process identifier. So kill dash nine and then seven nine nine. Oh, the joys of live coding. All right, uh, let's do that LS up again, and we're good. Okay. So oh, this is how my uh, when I taught boot camp, it'd always be like, "Hey, here's something really easy," and then it's like, "Oh yeah, I have to do like 20 different things because I forgot like the little things." Um, so now that port 3000 is open, right? Because my Nord, my node server is running on port 3000. If I just do nor node source app dot js uh, it runs so my example app is listening on localhost 3000 and i should be able to go to that in the web browser so localhost three one two three and there we go hello world right so um now all nodemon does is if i run this um these are called npm scripts if I just run npm start or npm run start, it'll then just run nodemon on app.js because every time, currently, if you just run node, every time you make a change, um, you're going to need to restart node. But nodemon, it just watches for any save file changes. Yeah, I mean, that's that's historically how backend development has, has been done. So Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. So... NPM start, and I've been having trouble with NPM. Not the node uh, one, the, the stopping and restarting part. Oh, yeah? OK. Yeah, so for some reason, NPM start isn't working for me, but yarn start does. So I, I've screwed up something in my my path, but yarn start works. OK, so now we're doing like a, a hot reload. So now let's look actually at the server. And so what we have is uh, this is literally pulled off directly from the express, like getting started. I think it's like, I just cop copied their, their code directly. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's, there's nothing like special here. It's just, um, what they have. And so like to walk through this code is where we're, we're requiring in, in express requiring in the module express calling it app, um, well, instantiating it because it, it's a, a class. And then uh, we're saying port through, our, our port is going to be 3000. Uh, if you go, if you perform a get request to um, like that forward slash is usually like, what would you call that? Like home? Like, and if you go there, we will send you hello world, right? Um, and then we set up a listener on port 3000 and we're going to console log example. Like once that listener is set up, we're going to console log that out. Easy server, right? So my job today is to um, make it so when you go to a particular URL, you're going to get uh, whatever's in data.json. So and I wanted to leave this blank because I feel like 
the how data is set up like in hierarchy is really up for debate usually so i was just thinking we could go through that together what do you think yeah i mean that i don't know i think this one's pretty straightforward but we can talk about okay it. so like my guess like it, i don't remember it doesn't need to be double quoted so like timeline like and now each each array index in the timeline is going to be a post. Yeah, that's and what so, I was thinking. Okay, and does it need an ID or anything, or I don't know. Like uh, just say. Let's see. Let me just look at. Just add some hits in. Yeah, I think we have an ID so far on the client side. So we have ID, text, and image URL. Okay, image URL, and for image URL, let's uh, look up cats, not cats, not the play cats, sorry, cat pictures. I don't want, uh, I don't want to see, oh my God, look at that hat. I'm taking, it's a good one. yeah, uh, good find right out the gate, right? Deservedly needs to be on the all time favorite images of cats. <laughs> Okay, so this data image URL is not the image that I want. Like usually when you open image a new tab, you can get whatever their hosted image. There we go, petsworld.india, boom. Sweet. So, and then just do that. Okay, and so then we'll just have like three of these. Yep. Okay. So, do, oh, do I need to have a ID? Uh, I don't think you, it's not necessary because we're not using it anywhere, but. Okay. Ah. How do you do redo on Linux? There we go. Okay, cool. And save. Thank you for not auto formatting. I love having so many dev computers that like random stuff is set up on random computers. Okay. So I think you could, is this VS code, right? Yep. So I think you could set up your config and just put it in a shared um, online service somewhere. So you just download it and load it up into whatever. Huh. Machine. Yeah, that sounds, yeah, I should do that. I don't know. I think my thing is, is like, I don't have like a particular flavor, like, because we're, um, I set up that package and did sassy pug stack. So like that formats differently than uh, on this computer, I've been mostly doing like view and then on my work computer, it's all angular. And, and so like all of the different, I don't know how to set it up, like to do different configs, but that's smart. I should, I should definitely probably yeah. become more opinionated. I, I think it offers you uh, a VS code. Um, I think you have like, you can have workplace settings and like a global setting. Hmm. I don't know. Um, I should, I should give that a. That a try. Um, User and workspace is what it is. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, I've seen workspaces like save workspace as. Okay. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know where to save that, but I could. Um. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So we want to do app dot get timeline. So in this, like, it's app dot get the slash is going to be the path of where this request is coming, mm -hmm. right? And then yeah, the request reckon res is request and response, right? I don't know if we've talked about that. No, we haven't. Yeah, request and response. Yeah, and that's kind of the the building. I, I'm not super familiar with Express, but I've done uh, this Hello World and similar tutorials numerous times in an effort to learn it. Um, that the it's kind of everything's based around the path and then the request and response right right yeah yeah so like the thing that i'm mostly comfortable with is um here like i'm just going to set up a test file what i'm mostly comfortable with is like regular node so like in regular node if i wanted to just set up an http server 
it would just be like http.create server. And then I think you get rec and res here, maybe, you know, and then uh, you set it to listen. And then you put uh, to your port like uh, 3000. And then you would have a callback function in here too. Um, and then every, like all of your paths would be like if rec.url, I think is what it is, is like this. And then so everything would be inside of like if statements, you know, or like a switch case or something. And because like you're inside of this, like scope kind of gets really weird and yeah. stuff. And you can see where that would get. Yeah. So this is just like a cleaner, like bare, like um, way of doing things. And then like, it's a lot easier to like bring in modules and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so let's do that. Okay. Yeah, I know very few, very, very few backend things, but like, like the bare bones, hello world. I, 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 I've gotten got that it, one down. Got it down huh? I've gotten the, <laughs> yeah, I've gotten the year down. Um, so we're just going to do rec and res again, the same thing. And this time, uh, I need to actually read the file. So, okay. So like read data.json and send back, right? Yep. Um, so question, uh, this is where I usually get messed up. Should I create in source a new file that says like data reader? and then require that in. I feel like sometimes I make too many files where it would be fine to just put it in here. What's what's your opinion on like splitting up files and like code complexity and stuff? Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's trade-offs, right? So um, it's going to kind of separate however you're getting your, your data, be it mm -hmm. from a file, be it from a database of some sort, be it from an external API. So I like, the way that I've started doing recently is like, this would be kind of my handling of requests and responses, right? In this file. Mm -hmm. And then I yeah. have uh, like a service file that maybe handles business logic um, for everything going on uh, with say where you like a timeline service, right? So okay. we would have uh, a timeline service that handles all your, all your business logic uh and then i would from there on build a kind of uh, i think it's the unit of work uh set up where you build a repository for timelines or, or posts really probably what it would be so you like give me all these posts and you call uh that po that post repository to get all of those for the timeline okay so question does does that mean, should I be doing, like, should this be a folder called services? And then- I, I would probably do it that way, okay. just to keep it cleaner and you have everything kind of organized there. So there's two there's two ways of thoughts about it, right? You okay. Could do, you could do it where you have a folder of services and then you have all your services in there and then you have like your, your, your data repository classes uh, or files and you, have all of those in a folder, right? Or I think this is kind of the way that Angular seems to do it uh, on the front end side of, hey, this is everything that deals with this timeline. Uh, this kind of getting and, and uh, taking of timeline requests. So I'm gonna group all these files that they have different layers of concern, but I'm gonna group all of them in the same place. Right, because they have like, there's like the controller or directives and stuff and they're in styles and, and that's all in like, right. Because if I'm, if like I'm dealing component. with one, I'm going to be dealing with the other and, and kind of the same, you could argue, uh, the, yeah. the, the concept in the back end. it's kind of the same. If I'm dealing with the business logic, then if I have all these other files that are the same, but it gets kind of muddy because then you're like, well, this is touching this, but then also over here, I'm touching this service. Right. Too, so where does it go? So that, I think that's probably why you end up with a lot of backend stuff of having these services in just a services and a data layer folder because, okay. because it does kind of get muddied to a certain extent of like, okay, well, which kind of endpoint file does this go with? 
Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I like having services. Yeah. I think that's good. And then time top call that's like timeline. Yeah, timeline, timeline okay. service. I, I don't. It's it's kind of up to you. Okay. Um. And I and I think I see why you're saying timeline. Like actually name it timeline under or like hyphen surface. Right, because oh. you may have a timeline object that you you know timeline dot js. Like you may have another folder that would be you know like a models uh, or entities. Um, yeah. Awesome. So my computer is froze. Super uh, cool. That's good. Really cool. I just thought you were really excited about. Uh, no, I'm really happy just listening to you. Uh, <laughs> about opening containing folders. Uh, yeah. Hmm. That's cool. And it's also the, the stream is froze. Um, I'm trying to like. The stream? Mm-hmm. So yeah, like my mouse is freely moving. My context menu is still up. So yeah, is that my mouse though, or is that your mouse? Yeah, it's, it's mine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yours is right there. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all froze up. All right. Okay. All right. Fair. Cool. Cool. I guess this is where we kind of. Huh. Well, what I could do if, yeah, this this little laptop is getting really janky. Yeah. Yeah. So I have like my powerful, you know, home built system right next to me, and mm -hmm. so maybe. I could just work from here, I guess. Yeah, you gonna jump on that machine? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I have so many windows open. Ah. <laughs> this one. All right. Um, I don't know. So should I kick you out of this? Cause that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So you. Ah, oh, but I've also lost your audio now, which I realized, uh, in retrospect. May not be great, so I'm hoping that you'll just join back up uh, in a moment. Um, if not, it's going to be a little bit strange. So I guess while we're doing that, I can. it here and see if I can get what he was working on. Mm. Let's change that to full view build. Okay, so Hey there. Hey, and he is back now. So I don't want to kill too test, much test, test. time. Yep, I can hear you. Cool. I don't have any video on you though. Yeah, I don't have a camera on this computer. Ah, but you can share the screen there. And I have your audio. Uh, and it's doubling the audio too, so. What do you mean it's doubling the audio? I'm using the wrong thing. Ah. I'm trying to figure. Okay. Testing. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. All one person who was listening, which was me. <laughs> we lost our one viewer. All right. Can you hear me? Testing. Yeah. I can hear you. Okay. There, there we go. So now it's not like doubling up. Well, it seems to be a little doubling. Is it still doubling? Let's see here. Test. Not anymore. There was like a, a weird echo. It was yeah, you know, like a second long echo. Yeah. I th okay. I think we're good now. All right. Great.
Um, and now I need to share my screen. And where is Jitsi? There's Jitsi. So Jitsi, brought to you by Jitsi. That's right. Jitsi.org. Jitsi stuff. Get your stuff over at Jitsi, where the stuff is. OK, so now you're going to see me struggle to figure out how to set up this machine, because this is a completely different one. And I don't think I even have it here. So we're going to get clone into that directory. Can you see my screen? Yeah. yeah. So you can see me just like running around, straddling around. Hi, I'm Axcop Fire. This is my profile uh, over here. Let's pray to the demo gods that I have credentials set up. Shift insert. Cool. HTTPS is not supported. Let's try SSH. Get home. Shift insert. All right. Hopefully, the clickety clack of this uh, thing isn't too, of this computer isn't too much. All right. How do I get to root? What is root? I don't even remember what, what. What is root on Windows? What do you mean? What is root? So what is uh, print open directory? C users loaf. Okay. So you this. can just navigate in, in there, and you can I think right click and uh, open WinBash there. Uh. You mean like I, I don't I don't think I have code set up on my path. I do. Yay. Awesome. Okay, so we're back. Um and I need to be on the server. Voila. And server. Wonderful. We're in here. We're doing this. This needs to be set up again. Uh and to do that, we're just going to go to hitsum.co and uh, that looks like text. And uh, no, it is that. And then we're going to have, yeah. Um, it's an array of uh, objects, and each object is text. And text. That cool auto wrapping's not on. There we go. And the other thing was image URL. Oh no, did we lose that cute little kitty uh, cat? Yeah, but I'm hoping, I was just thinking that, I'm hoping that uh, Google was. This is testing of how the uh, Algo? algorithm works. Yeah, will I be able to find it? Okay, green eyes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, Google. You know what I'm talking about. Is this what we want? No. Uh, nope. Uh, how did I get it again? I don't even remember. Is it this you one? you right click it? Yeah. Yeah, it's just I got it. I... Uh, there it is. Mm. Nope. No. No, you didn't, do it. you didn't go to the website. Yeah. Open image in new tab. There it is. Weird. Yeah. I just had to right, double, uh, double right click it. Yeah. You know, as Third. you do. Third time to try. Yeah. It's almost like we're like super professional at this and totally know what we're doing. It's, I, look, I, I hit my goals for the day. I hit the uh, stream and the record buttons. So my work here is done. Uh, yeah. Oh, I love that cat so much. Uh, Read data and send. All right. If it's all right with you, I would like to send this up. Yeah. Uh, please save. Wonderful. Uh, can I push? Do I have credentials? Yes. I have them SSH credentials set up. Good job, buddy boy. Although auto wrap keeps turning off, which is kind of annoying. Okay, so we were going to do services. In here, timeline service, .js. okay. In timeline service, what we're gonna do is read a file. Uh, for that, I'm gonna need conf 
I'm going to need a file system, require FS. And probably the thing that I want to have, I, pro uh, I need to have, uh, ooh, what's that thing? Babel. I probably need to have Babel loaded so that I can, I don't know if I can do export default because I don't have Babel up and loaded. What is that going to give you, Babel? Babel? Uh, Babel gives me like new ES whatever features, you know, ES 2016, all the fancy ES stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of a, a bummer not having that loaded. You don't need to look at my weird desktop, but that cat. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is module.exports, which is the node way of getting things around. And we're gonna say module.exports. Timeline service, and let's just make it look like it's a class for now. Okay, Maybe, I think this is the way of doing it. And if you're screaming, because stop, I'm trying to, yeah, you, you just need to be like that. Okay. Okay, so we have our timeline service function. And what it's going to do is do an fs.read file. And what I want to do is when it's done. And I think what this takes is like a file path. And so, ugh, so here it's going to, okay. It's going to take a file path and a callback function. And I, because this is the asynchronous one. Yeah. Uh, so I always get mixed up on, I literally do this every single time. Yeah, Is so it, it takes a path and then an error and yeah, data? Yeah, yeah, so the callback function okay. is paths, error it's and on data. exact same page. Yeah, it's so good. Um, does this, the thing is, is when it, the, my question is, is like, there's like, it comes in as a stream. So if I just did return data instantly, mm -hmm. it's going to like return part of the stream or something. So I think you have to set up like a listener, maybe. Like this is not right. Read so, file con content. No, I guess it's just that. Well, you can just, right? Yeah, so you can do that. And then this, apparently it's saying that that uh, so it's all going into into memory, right? So it's reading the full content, but uh, there's a option to read the file content using streams. Yeah. So, but I don't know if it really. I mean, that maybe we just need to note it and and move on. But okay, because this is reading file from the data is really just a stopgap measure for us. Anyway. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and then it's a super dumb way. So be, uh, I need to actually get up one folder. So like the path of data.json is like that. And so that's not a thing. That's not a path that it's going to understand. So what I, what I need is this path uh, module from node uh -huh. and, and I honestly don't remember how to get to this path. So like const data path, I think. I wanna say it's like path.join. There's two different ones and it's like, so dot dot and data.json will get us there. But it it's like that and dir name or something needs to be in there. It's almost like I have no idea what I'm doing. Node path. How's the clicky clack of my mechanical keyboard? Is that super fun? It, it's clicky and clacky. Yeah, sorry. That's all right. I think mine's doing the same, so I'm just not typing as much. Okay. Okay, so dir name. So it's like dir name and then dot dot because there's two different. Okay, dir name public. How do I go in my dot dot? How do I do dot dot? Node path dot. 
Maybe go up. Because there's two different things. Path.resolve versus path.join. That's what it is. OK. So ah, path.join, path.resolve. Let's guess. Let's guess that it is path.resolve. I don't think it's path that joint. So your name dot dot data dot JSON. Okay, we're gonna refile from our data path, and we are gonna take error data if er uh, row new error er, question maybe. Yeah, it know. seems like uh, path.resolve is what you're going to want there. Noits. From reading the documentation. But we'll see. Oh, good job. That's like uh, that's like what fancy people do is read documentation. Um, I look for the Stack Overflow post. Um, can I just do return data? Question mark, maybe? Well, why not? Uh, let's console log out data, which... So I think, you, I think you're going to have... Nope, never mind. Just kidding. It should be stringified JSON, right? No, I think it, I think that's fine. Okay. Um, require it in here because it's going to basically read it as a text file, which would be in a JSON format, which would be fine. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, service. Uh, let's spell Tim line correctly, please. And here, will it work? Is the question. It should, right? That should do a thing. Yep. Nope. Uh, 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 no, you want to um, uh, set that to a variable that you're getting. Right here. Uh, well, yeah, I bet, yeah. I mean, yeah. And then. And then re return that, right? Return. To uh, oh, yeah, right, so send it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That sounds good, right? Uh, one second. Yeah. Uh, let data. And then I think, so the issue here is that th since this is async, this is going to be a promise, right? So I think what we need is to return a new promise, right? And uh, I'm not sure. I mean, is it async? Yeah. I do. Oh, know. yeah, yeah, because there's a read file sync. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so then this needs to be in smorgasbords. And I should be able to do a sync await, but actually, let's see, because you should, that, that's like a babble thing. So uh, here, I don't know if whatever version of node I'm running, if it'll be able to do that. Uh, let data. Uh, Let's say, let's call it result. Result equals data and then return result. And let's see if we can do that. I don't know. We're not running Babel, so this could totally do absolutely nothing. Um, Right. Uh, ooh, gross. PowerShell. Uh, maybe it'll work. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, what am I doing? npm run start is not going to work because I have to do an npm install first. Gosh, darn it. Uh, I'm in the wrong folder. Uh, cd server. Right. Is this it? npm install. OK. So while that's installing, let's see here. Timeline. Oh, that was quick. Okay. Yeah, we don't have to put a whole lot of stuff in there yet. Yeah, that usually takes like a really long time. 
the weight is only valid in an async function. Yeah. This needs to be async. Okay, get back there. Uh, path dot resolve is not a function. What? Resolve. Ah. Path dot resolve. That's it. Should be called resolve. Should. Uh, yeah. I don't know what I just did. Um, for all of you security people, did I just screw up? Question mark. Um, Localhost three one two three. Hello world. And go to timeline. And it broke because timeline service is not a function. function. Hmm. Interesting. Timeline. Did I spell it wrong? Require. Oh, wait, do, you, do you need uh, .js at the end of the, the import or the require? Ooh, maybe. And look at this nice little hot reloading. Um, OK, let's do this. Uh, because I've forgotten already how to do module.exports, because I've been running with this for a while, default async function. Let's see if the F6 works, fingers crossed. Not a function. Uh, unexpected token dot exports. Yeah, darn. OK, I just need to figure out how to do module dot exports. OK, no module exports uh, function. Module.exports equals a string. Great. Uh, that's not helpful. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Dot log equals function. Okay. Yeah, okie dokie. That's it. So. Did you ever try it after you added the JS to? Uh... Uh, mm, no. Okay. So that may have just been, you may have been trying to fix too many things at once. Uh, yeah, unhandled promise rejection warning. Okay, so, all right, so let's, yeah, let's not use async because I don't know if that's going to work right now. So let's do a new promise that takes two arguments. The first argument is resolved, the second one is reject. And do an arrow function because that works for reasons. And in here, I don't think I'll need a little result. Okay, so we have result. So if an error, throw a new error. Lies. If an error now, reject that error. Okay. Uh, console uh, one data. Yeah, you don't have that result. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to resolve with my data. And you're now useless. Wonderful. Okay. So app is listening, app is good, everything is saved. Now we don't have a wait. We don't have that. And if there's an error, we're going to catch that error. First thing we're going to do, okay, so that's timeline. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna put everything in a dot then dot catch. So dot then. So if we succeed, we're gonna get our data, and we are going to res dot send our data. We don't need that. Uh, and if we don't get data and we get an error, let us throw a new. Let's not throw it. Let's just console log it. Console dot error error. Okay, that looks like a thing. You know what I mean? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Come on. That's what I'm talking about. So we are timeline services, not a function. Okay. So it's not ES6. That's not the issue. Uh, Have I spelled timeline service wrong? That, it, is that path proper? This path? 
we're at the yeah we're at the root of source in app dot slash over to services do you, timeline service subjects. do you need the dot oh do you think it's just this yeah uh no yeah we need the dot okay um oops. okay what i think it is is like module dot exports so how about this if you're not a function, what are you? Like, console.log, what are you, boy? What's going on here? Online service is not a function. We all agree. It's a fu no, it says function when you log it. Look at it down. Yeah, but why is it? Oh, because it's not res.send. Sorry. Um, timeline service is a function. What happens when we do that is not a function. Interesting. Interest. I think it has to do with this module.exports thing. Like module.exports message.log. Ah, ah, uh, timeline. Uh, so you, do you need to name the function in the timeline service? This literally might be it where it's timeline service dot timeline service oh okay that would be fun we'll need to fix that if that's the case uh i downloaded something oh. huh i don't know what i downloaded from from uh across the oh there you go there, there's a buffer of uh stuff great okay let's not send that eh Okay, yeah, I thought this might be the issue. Okay, so let's just get rid of that. So if you, put a, if you put a name on that function. I think that'll work. Data, and then let's just constant on here. If I put a name on that function? Yeah. This function? No, no, I think in, that I, in the timeline service class. Um, I think if I leave it like this, this is like saying it's the bare export. Yeah. So that should, yeah, that's, that's how we want it for now. I don't like this at all. Um, oh, I think, mm, no, I think that's what we want for now. Cause we just want the, it to be a, like we're naming it timeline service here. Is that what you meant? What did you? No, that's not what I meant. So you're going to have other things in the timeline service besides this, just this one function, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so in ES6, what this is going to turn into is exporting a single class. Yep. And then um, we would just put all of our services inside of that class or methods and stuff. Yeah. Uh, we can do that here, like, uh, you know, instead of returning just a promise, we can refactor this to have different, we can attach different methods to this, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's, what, that's I think what I'm talking about. Okay, so should this be a, a different method? What would you call this method? Like get data or something? Yeah, it's gonna be uh, get timeline, probably. Okay. Um, so then do get timeline? service get timeline. And there's our buffer data. Yep. We are console logging it twice. Um, I could make this more clever and make it a ternary. Should I do that? Are you a fan of ternaries? 
Not, I mean, so. This is cleverer. This is cleverer. <laughs> um, is it less readable? It's not terribly unreadable, but is there going to be other stuff that goes on in there that you're going to eventually have to go back to how you have it in lines 9 through 12 anyway? Oh, right. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Cool. Um, so yeah, so that's that. And in here, yeah, so like even right now, right? We don't like, what I really in here just want to send, I this is what I want, right? Yeah. I want to send the data. Um, however, uh, I think probably in here we should package it up a little nicer instead of just resolving with data. Like data to string. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say we. That's where you would want to handle it in that service. So you kind of. You basically just are giving back to, uh, like coming from the .NET world, right? Your your um, app .js file is gonna be what I would consider all your endpoint controllers, right? Um, yeah. So all you want that to really be concerned about is dealing with the request and the response objects, right? Yeah. And then that's why you use the service for packaging it up how you want it to, uh, and then just shooting that back to that uh, endpoint uh, app.js class, and then it, it handling it and passing it back down, down the pipe. Yeah. Um. Um, I don't know why it keeps downloading whenever I send it. So it might, um, uh, I mean, it's not caching that, right? It's not caching that. Uh, well, hold on. What's it? Look in your network tab and see what. And refresh. Yeah. Ugh. Um, I feel like it should just send go, it. Go to the response tab on that. The response? Yeah. Uh, yeah, click on that. Yeah, I'm clicking. Ah, it's not. interesting. Look, uh, so my guess is it doesn't like anything in there. So maybe like response equals data to string and then resolve with that response. Oh, uh, let's see here. What does response even look like? Which is so the response look. This is a string. So we have the data. Oh. It is a string. All right. Right. Here, uh, yep. con what is the type of? It should be a string, would be my guess. No? Um, but for some reason, it's downloading. It should just send the data, right? And I do not want to look inside of this. What is it? Okay. Yeah, I don't know what that is. What I don't know what we're downloading. But... Hmm. Uh, it's a string, so they should double uh, load it, right? Um, do uh, rest dot json. Rest. R rest. Uh, response in, in oh. the in the app dot js file. This? Yeah. Res.json. Res.json. Right here? Nope. Instead of res.send. Okay. Like that? Yep. Is that what? Uh, and then you want me to put rest in here? Yes. OK. 
Okay. Wait. Nice. Yeah. Hmm. That's weird. Is that like a JSON.parse for like Express? Yes. It sends a JSON response. But why would just regular old send? Because it's a string. Yeah, I don't know. Here, do we even need this? What if I just send just the data without it to string? Got it. Let's to string it, eh? Oh, uh, because it's still it's still a stream coming back from that the file read probably. Okay, but that's our that's our JSON, so we got it, right? Yep. Is is uh that that what we wanted? Uh, no, not really. Oh no? No. What what should timeline resolve with then? Well so no look just look at that response, right? Because it has mm -hmm. like page, you know, new lines and things like that in there. It should just be Oh. Okay. Uh what about Jason.parse? Like that? That may be. Let's do that. You may not need to choose Hey, there you go. Yeah, I think I have to two string it because or else it'll be a buffer. Okay. All right. I didn't know if the if the JSON parse would would handle that. Oh, you think? I don't know. Why not? Will if will JSON dot parse parse a buffer? It will. Yeah, because I think it's probably behind the scenes has to go ahead and make the, and resolve that buffer. Yeah, or anyway, an attempt so. to parse. So. Nice. Sweet. Sweet business. Okay. Um, so now that we have that, yeah, that, that's a fine endpoint, right? That's, yeah, I think so. Should this be called get timeline then, since that's what the method name is? Uh, no. Uh, okay. So going by like your rest, so well, there's two thoughts, right? So you could say, hey, we're building a rest uh, endpoint, or yeah. um, you know, you have uh, RPC, which now uh, has been kind of superseded by uh, gRPC stuff, where it's uh, remote procedure calls. So okay. With your rest, you're really dealing with. Um, are you familiar with the rest and how it's set up? No. So. REST is, uh, let me see what it stands for again. Represent state transfer? Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. Rep REST. Represent state. Representational state transfer. Yeah, right. So, yeah. Uh, and I think the theory of it is, is that you don't really, you're not really concerned about, um, I did the same search. Uh, you're not really concerned about the uh, state uh, uh, of the objects. You're just dealing with these resources. So you're, yeah. you're chaining like hierarchy, like you have timeline slash post. And so by using your HTTP verbs uh, and, and actions, that's what's determining what you're doing to that. Okay. So the uh, by slash timeline get, um, yeah. We're already this this get is this get right yeah so and then you know app dot post slash timeline is be when you're saving a timeline object right mm -hmm. um, so uh, I don't think that we need to rename it if if we're going to build a REST API versus uh, an RPC or maybe that's a decision we have to make uh, about which one. The API. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's this smashing magazine, which I could. We'll link to it in the show notes. Um, but maybe. Yeah. XML RPC. I know I don't like working with XML. No, um, we're not going to work with XML. So don't, don't even start talking about that. 
Yeah. But I think, I mean, for now, just say rest because that, I mean, that seems to be what the, the everybody's talking about. Yeah, I mean the new the new kid on the block is really the GRPC, which is um, oh. just what? Oh, I didn't know GRPC is the new kid on the block. Yeah. Okay. So I think it kind of went from RPC to rest, and now you're coming back around to uh, you know as everything goes in cycles back to the uh, GRPC, uh, which was apparently an internal tool that Google was developing. Um, hmm. which is where the G comes from, but that's, uh, oh, it's not an official. It's, it's not GraphQL? No. Okay. I don't know anything. I'm going to read all these things. Cool. Yeah. Oh, so much knowledge. Okay. Well, I think that's all I got. All I'm going to do is, you know, send this up and... Added timeline URL, I guess. And now, if this computer dies, so be it. Yeah. Um, okay. Right, so let's look, look at the project. Yeah. So to serve JSON file of posts. Done. Done. Okay. All right. So, so, so what do we want to do? Do you oh, want to do done, this? You've done that one too. Where? The build this? timeline service. Yep. No, this is you for no, retrieving posts no, from no. backend. No, no, no. Oh, yes. Okay, you're right. It is me. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. We can put that there. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think you. This should. This shouldn't be too difficult, right? No, it's not going to be difficult at all. So we can do that next time. Did you want to do two cards, maybe? Yeah, oh. yeah. So let's pull that. Um, let's pull that top card out too. So do that. Yeah, we'll do those two next time around. Okay. So let's figure out what's next on. Um, so we'll need to figure out a way to store posts. Okay. That's going to be on me, right? Because you're going to yep. upload image and text. Yeah, and then you're going to need to store image. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So I think we have. Uh, we've done it. We have. So. Cool beans. All right, so that's all we have uh, for this this go round. We will uh, see you. Uh, you want to do this week sometime? Maybe I don't know. We'll figure out a time. Yeah, and, uh, we can tweet. We'll let you know on our new Twitter, Dev Flyer. Yeah. Uh, so so follow that. Do we even? Is anybody even watching? Um, uh, no. Okay. Well, just come to Twitter at Dev Flyer for all of our updates. Thanks. All right, cool. Talk hey. to you later, bye.